AV people, are we set? Everybody's here, everybody's gathered, we might as well eat, you know? Let me, let me know when we're on live, please. We're on live? Let me say, friends, that... Yeah, that's when we are live. As you can tell we're live because my microphone or something is screwing up. Would it help if I took the mic off? You know what they say about technology being wonderful except when it doesn't work. You know. So the smart people who study congregational health point to a couple of indicators that help you tell whether or not a congregation is healthy, whether or not a congregation has anxiety, uh, that sort of thing. Um, the ability to tell a joke and laugh at it in the middle of a meeting is a good sign that a congregation is healthy. Congregations that cannot laugh at a joke, there's something wrong with them. So if one of our presenters makes a joke, please feel free to laugh. Okay, that's good. I'm feeling a little pocket of life here. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Feel free to burst out in applause, in fact, if that's where you want to go. <clears throat> I'm going to bask for just a moment in that. Uh, <clears throat> another thing, another important indicator of a congregational's, congregation's basic health is its ability to have difficult conversations. Think of any organization that you have ever been a part of. Uh, the ability to have difficult conversations, especially before you get to a crisis point, is a really strong indicator of the congregation's, the organization's health. Uh, I have seen this presentation now, I think, probably, what, half a dozen times? Is that, is that about right? Okay. Uh, and I gotta tell you, most congregations are two or more years away from having this, con con this conversation. They will put it off and put it off. The reality is churches resist change until you hold a gun to their head. The fact that Pastor Dan pushed the session, the fact that the session took it seriously, that they, not, that they assembled this task force, these elders seeking wisdom to do something of a dive into our finances and our demographics. That is one of the most powerful indicators of the health of this congregation that I know of. So I want you to bear that in mind, okay? The, the numbers say some very important things that the speakers will bring out, and, and those need to be paid attention to, and they are serious. But the fact that we are having the conversation itself says this is a good congregation that can deal with these issues. Whatever we have to do, whatever in, you know, direction this conversation leads us in, we are the congregation that is not going to be constrained by boundaries. We're going to break out of our lanes and go where God calls us to go. So be heartened, healthy Presbyterians. Let's pray. Lord God, we ask you now to open our hearts and our minds. Fill us with your peace and your calm. Give us attentiveness. Give our speakers ease and confidence. And remind us, Lord, that you do not measure success as the world measures. You measure success by how closely we follow in the steps of Jesus. 
And we pray that this presentation today will help us follow him even closer to the cross and beyond. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. Good morning, and thank you for your attention and your attendance here today. My name is Felicia Cass, and I serve on the Finance Committee session and the new committee that's formed to look at our future, where we, where we are going, called Elders Seeking Wisdom. Uh, I serve on that committee, um, and speaking with me today will be John Spies and Jody Fabrizio. Also serving on the committee are Marie Hill, Judy Kester, Tasha Knight, and Dean Thede. The structure for today's presentation is a short introduction and then three sections looking at our history, our financials, and future projections. At the end of each section, we will take questions up to five minutes. We're limiting the time for questions just to keep the meeting moving, but we will stay after if you have questions or comments. And could I ask those who are serving on session please to stand up so people can see where you are in the congregation? So these are the folks um, that you can talk to after this session, thank you. So this presentation today is um, a little bit like catching a view of yourself as you pass by a store window and not seeing exactly what you thought you were going to see or stepping on the scales and seeing a surprising number. But this is a mirror that reflects the reality of where we are today. Our congregation has been hitting the rumble strips of life for a while now, and you can see that in the frozen staff salaries, the endowment covering shortfalls with more dollars than is prudent or sustainable, and depleting our maintenance fund. This is no one's fault. It's not previous staff, it's not the session. The best decisions available with the information available at the time were made. And now we need to make new decisions. This also reflects national trends, which we're going to talk about and show you today. Westminster doesn't operate in a bubble. We're impacted by those national trends. And it's a reflection of the pandemic really hitting our budget this year more than it did last. We hope you will use this information to focus on our future. How do we adjust and change to face this new reality to serve those who faithfully show up each week here in the pews and continue to witness to our community? Our path forward will require humility, courage, and hope. I'll turn this over to Jody Fabrizio now. Good morning. I want to thank Pastor Ken for letting the cat out of the bag that he's seen this a half a dozen times because my anxiety went through the roof um, of whether I was prepared for this. So appropriate for today, I am outside of my lane. So those of you that know me know that this must be very important for me to be able to get up and speak to you today. So. I'm here talking about the trends of our membership, our attendance, and our giving. And with that, we're going to start with uh, more of trends for churches in general. 
In 2021, a Gallup survey polled that Americans saying they belong to a church, synagogue, or mosque was 47%. A stark contrast from 1937 when that question was first asked, and the answer was 73%. Even as recent as 20, little over 20 years ago, 1999, that was still 70%. But we have declined, and for the first time in more than eight decades of that question being polled, we are down below the 50% threshold. And this is not just churches. Um, volunteer societies as a whole are struggling with the same things. Lions Club, Rotary Club, um, you know, places, they're, they're challenged to find volunteers and support. So we're not alone, but we're going to make our focus on church and the Presbyterian Church um, in specific. We're going to start with a national level. Our national PCUSA, which is a little over 9,300 churches, over the last five years, or not the last five years, but over a five-year period survey, um, showed an attendance decline of 24.5% and a contribution decline of 15%. Drilling down a little further to our synod, um, which is about 780 churches comprised of Iowa and our neighboring states, they've witnessed a 25% decline in attendance and a 36.5% decline in contribution. Narrowing our scope a little further, we go to our Presbytery of North Central Iowa. This is just 46 churches, Fort Dodge to Jessup, Ames to the Minnesota border. We've seen an attendance decline of 17% and a contribution decline of 55%. Much higher decline in contributions for the Midwest compared to our national. So where does this put us with Westminster? Our Westminster attendance has witnessed a decrease of 28.8%, a much higher decline than our local, regional, national Presbyterian churches have seen. It's important to note that when we're looking at this, um, we're talking about all Presbyterian churches, so not necessarily churches of Westminster size. Um, some are, some aren't. Um, in terms of our contribution decrease, we have witnessed a 24% decrease in contribution, and while that is significant, um, it is less than our regional churches. For that, we can be thankful. We are higher than our national average. So what does this mean in terms of numbers for Westminster? And I know this might be difficult for you to see um, in spreadsheet form. This is an exhibit that's in the packet that you can take with, up, with you. Um, it's Exhibit A. And when we started taking a look at our trends for Westminster, we were looking at years 2014 to 2020, and we have declines in all three of these categories, our membership, our pledging units, and our average worship attendance. Uh, you'll note that we did not have a figure for 2020 for our average worship attendance, and that's in part because we were not in person for the full year, and we have a difficult time judging or calculating, keeping track of who is watching virtually um, to make that count. So with declines in all these areas, what does that mean for us in terms of dollars? In 2021, Pledges from, age, from pledging units age 60 and older totaled roughly $374,000, or 79% of our overall pledged budget of 472,578. When we were looking at these trends, you'll see in Exhibit B, we did a comparison of pledge year 2014, which was a higher year for pledges for Westminster, versus 2021, and were broken down by some age brackets. 
The interesting thing to note that while we, between 2014 and 2021, have almost a quarter of a million dollar less in pledged revenue, the actual percentage is around three, four, three, quarter, three quarters of our pledges have come from the age brackets 60 and older. As we were meeting, some of the things that Felicia would talk to us about would be a rumble strip. And I feel as though this is a rumble strip that we can't afford to ignore. Declining membership is a trend nationally and for Westminster. Westminster is an older and poorer than we've been in the past. And looking at these trends, it became apparent to us that sooner rather than later, we're gonna be faced with challenges of how we're, our ability to operate in the way we've expected, certainly in the way that we've become accustomed to in the past. We need to start thinking about something in a different way. We need input on how we can reimagine ways to carry out the mission of Westminster with the resources that we have. Next, we're going to be taking a look, a deeper look at our financial picture. And before we do that, though, I do want to stop and give opportunity if anybody has any questions about the trends. Charlie? Yes, we're talking about worship. We're not talking programs or things like that. We're, we're physically, we count our, the people that are in the seats. Oh, I'm sorry. Charlie was asking if the report on the worship attendance figures on Exhibit A were from church services, and, it, and that is strictly those are numbers of people attending our worship service. Anybody else? And I will turn things over to John Spees to talk a little bit about our financial situation. Good morning. As Jody mentioned, my name is John Spees. I've had the pleasure, if you can call it that, of serving as chair of finance for several years, uh, served on the uh, stewardship committee and also have the honor of serving on session as one of your representative elders. I'm gonna throw a lot of numbers at you. Um, they're in the handouts, as Jody mentioned. I want you to not only focus on the numbers, but I'd like you to focus on the trend. This slide shows an historical revenue and expense analysis between 2014 through 2020 similar year uh, periods as what Jody was looking at. We have one pledged, uh, we have one column, which is pledged revenues. So when we do a stewardship campaign, these are your numbers that if you chose to pledge, we're taking these down and totaling, totaling them. The next column is actual revenue. So that includes money that we've brought in through pledges, non-pledged receipts, loose offerings per capita, and income. What that actual revenue figure for the last couple years does not include, if you remember last year, there was a government program helped to set up businesses and organizations. It was called the PPP program, Payment Protection Program. The church applied for that, received just over an $88,000 loan. We adhered to the government qualifications that loan then turned into a uh, gift. It was a, a non-loan loan, if you want to call it that. But that revenue for 2020 is not included in this presentation. It also, that actual revenue also does not count money that we've um, been fortunate to use from the endowment. So this is truly 
if you want to call it your checkbook, this is what you earned every year that we're looking at. The next column is actual expenses. As it says, this is what the church spent on programming, on salaries, on the building, etc. And then the last on the right hand side is the actual overage or shortfall for those years. As you can see, the trend, 2014, 2015, we had a surplus. After those years, we've been relying on endowment, reserves, PPP to help with the operation of the church. The next slide is an analysis of the expenses. Whether it be the finance committee or session, we have been trying to be good stewards of the resources that you've entrusted with us. This gives you a general idea with the major expense categories over the last seven years, the trend, the dollars. We've highlighted on the screen, it's a little more difficult to see there, but the three major categories, property, personnel, and we've also highlighted mission. Personnel we've highlighted because it's, it's the largest expense, the largest resource driven item within the budget. Property, this beautiful building does take a lot of money to upkeep. Missions, we put it that there because over the years the church has tried to contribute 10% of our resources to mission, whether that's local mission, global mission, but 10%. The last couple years through the budgeting process where revenues weren't coming in as much as uh, we would like them to, we've switched that formula to be pledged, 10% of pledged revenue as opposed to counting the endowment money that, that we would uh, budget to supplement the mission budget. Here, a lot of numbers, but as you can see on that right hand side, percent decrease. So what we're doing comparing 2014 to 2020 figures. So administration, we've reduced that by 30%. Property, I'm gonna, I'm gonna truncate the, uh, the, the decimals about 23%. Some of these smaller categories, you might see bigger uh, decreases. So Christian Ed, 64%, personnel 14.5%, missions around 24% decrease. Some other notables, um, hospitality deacons off about 49%, membership and outreach off 47%. Bottom line, if we look at total expenses 2014 compared to 2020, we're down about 19%. We've tried to, through the budgeting process, be that good steward. Some way we, we've accomplished that, whether it's right or wrong. Dean would might argue that it's wrong, and some others also. This church is, we call it a newer church. We've done many different additions over the last 20, 25 years. It's a beautiful church. It takes a lot to upkeep not just wiping the dust off the floors, picking up the leaves, mowing the lawn. There is infrastructure here. We have what's called a major maintenance budget. A healthy church adds to that each year. Think of it if you own a house. You know you have a furnace. You know it's 15 years old or 10 years old. I better budget every year to put something in that savings account so that when that furnace needs to re be replaced, I have the money there waiting to do that. The last few years, we've been un unable to add to that major maintenance account. To give you an idea, uh, we've got four major rooftop air conditioning furnace units in this building, all past their use useful life. We just had to replace one that cost about $8,400. We've done estimates that it, as what it would cost to replace the remaining three. We're getting estimates back that's about $50,000 when those units start to go and can't be repaired. Major maintenance will become a big issue for us 
if we don't find solutions to, to our trends. The other item, major maintenance, we have got a lot of smaller units to keep us comfortable in the nursery, in the, you know, whatever classrooms. We've looked at those, those are all units that are nearing or past their useful life. There's about $60,000 of expense there. A lot of expense that we need to try to plan for in the next three, five, ten years, or next year, depending on timing. Got ahead of myself, sorry about that. A lot of numbers, but let's look at the trends. The trends aren't positive when it comes to the revenue and the expense that we have. That's why we as the elders seeking wisdom, that's why we as session are looking at this, asking for your help. We're not experts in all the categories. You may have ideas, you may have questions, feel free to touch base with all of us as elders, with staff, they can relay questions back to us. We're gonna to try to communicate things better to you, be transparent. This is also gonna help with our PNC, our search for the next pastor, because one of the major tasks that they have is to do a mission study. Mission study, not what type of programs are we offering the local community? Mission study as what is the church doing and what do we want to do in the future? The financial piece is a big piece of what we can do in the future. Are there any questions right now? Judy. I guess I didn't understand the question. Oh. Our group right now hasn't done a study, but okay. I, I think the question was, have we done a have we looked at our staffing model compared to other churches within the Presbytery? Revenue compared to staff? Okay, revenue to staff ratio. We haven't done that deep dive yet. It might be something that we look at in the near future. Um, but what I can say over the last few years, because of the, the pledging and revenue issue, we've had to do some staffing realignment. Uh, right now we're fortunate from a budget standpoint, we don't have a full-time music director. That helps the budget. That's not a permanent solution uh, because we will want to start the music program up and we want a good qualified professional there and we have to pay to get that, that party um, to help us go forward in our music ministry. Any other question? Feel free to touch base with one of us, whether it's a session member, a member of the Elder Seeking Wisdom. Also, you can email, as the slide shows, Jody here at the church. She will forward those on to our group. The next slides are Felicia's, so thank you. So the question is, where are we for 2021? Uh, okay. So in 2021, we had a total of 53 giving units who reduced their pledges. 32 uh, giving units decided not to pledge, and 21 reduced their pledges. 45 of those giving units who decided not to pledge had lifestyle changes. So um, lifestyle includes passing, death, retirement, child going off to college, a job change. Uh, we had five that had some kind of conflict with the church. This is not that unusual that there would be um, some attrition. And three giving units for other reasons. 
we also had growth. Uh, we had 43 units either increase or became new. So we had 34 increase their pledges and nine new pledges. So we have some growth in our congregation. Unfortunately, those did not counterbalance the total that we saw decreasing. So it's about 21,000 that uh, increased their pledges and that compares to 132,000 roughly that decreased. So we're in June, but the books hadn't closed in time for us to give you uh, the main numbers. What we could give you with confidence is the first four months of the year in terms of revenue. So our year-to-date revenue is roughly 180,000. So if you take the first four months, you multiply that times three, that gives you a projected revenue of 539,000 for 2021. Uh, you will see January revenue is slightly higher. We have um, some giving that's for the whole year that comes in in January. We anticipate in December we will have equally high um, giving. So then we look at our expenses. Again, we have all the expenses in um, through the end of April. You'll notice an uptick when we get to May. That's because we now have our interim head of staff here. And then this fall you see another uh, slight increase. That's because we are hoping to get back to a more normal year with Christian Ed and with the music programs. So that gives us a total uh, expenditures of 609000 let's call it and roughly a gap or a deficit of about $70,000 projecting for this year. So that's this year, it's very sobering. It gets even more sobering as we take a look at the trend, if we take the trend lines that we have shown you and forecast those trend lines to continue into the future. Now, I do wanna say I am not snack. I don't have Doppler radar to forecast precisely what the future is going to look like. So we were, were trying to give you some ranges where the trend lines look like they're going, but know that this is also a bit up to us. How do we react? What do we do? Um, we started this process last fall and a session gave us the charge of creating a five-year plan. So remember last fall was 2020. We started looking at 2025. We've kind of just stuck with that because 2025 has a nice ring. So you might wonder where the five-year plan is when we're into 2021. If attendance trends continue as they've been, we would anticipate Sunday worship attendance to average about 150. And remember I said I don't have a Doppler radar, I can't do a precise forecast for what revenue is gonna look like. We've seen trends that say we are a poorer congregation. So we're somewhere, we think, looking at pledged revenue between 225,000 and 400,000. What are our next steps? That is up to us. And we need your help and your feedback. In your, this is a hard slide to read on the screen, but in your packets, you have some questions that we are asking you. Um, we don't intend to limit your contributions to, to our process, but we wanted to get you started to think about how can we take this um, information, digest it, metabolize it, and come up with something that's actionable? So these questions we would like you to prayerfully consider and then um, email a response to Jody um, at the church by next Sunday at 5 p.m. We've put a deadline on this so that we can get the information in and process it also to encourage you to respond. 
Are there questions? Yes. That's a great, so the question is, have we thought about having some smaller breakout sessions? That's a great idea. Let me tell you what we are gonna do concretely and what might come out of this. We're, we've given you a deadline to respond by June 13th. Elder Seeking Wisdom is meeting June 17th to craft a communication strategy, an ongoing communication strategy, so to me, communication suggests two way. The, right now, this is one way, it's at you, and then you're gonna give us communication back. But I think that's an excellent suggestion to um, maybe have some smaller groups that are more dynamic. Um, John Spees referenced this, we also wanna work with PNC so that these are sort of hand in glove um, efforts that get us to a, a agreed upon vision for our future. That's an excellent suggestion, thank you. Other questions? Yep. Yes. So if you look at exhibit, I think it's F. It, you can see the uh, property. In 2020, it cost us $73,000 to keep the doors open. Hold on just a second, Judy, because Jody is suggesting the doors were mostly shut that year in 2020. So let's look at in 2019, when the doors were wide open, it cost us $85,000. Okay, any, did you have more questions, Judy? Yes, Vicki. So the question is, is there a budgeted um, maintenance line? It, I believe there was a small amount each year. Dean, correct me if I'm wrong. So it used, we used to budget for it, uh, for maintenance. We, we have reduced that amount. I think Dean told me, and he'll shake his head vigorously if, he, if I'm saying this incorrectly, that we have been budgeting five to $7,000 a year in maintenance. Sorry? Oh, and this year we only budgeted 1,000. So the answer is no, we have not been budgeting for those major maintenance. Other questions? So these numbers are sobering. We are facing shifts in our demographics that are national in scope, and it's unlikely Westminster is going to single-handedly turn those demographics around. The long history of our church is one of growth and retreat. We are the ones challenged with holding steadfast during a period of decline. I'd like for you to think about when the fall comes and the trees release their leaves, the leaves fall down, it would be madness 
for us to go around and try to paste those leaves back on the trees because it's always been that way or we like it better with the trees with the leaves on it. If we face this moment of our release with humility and courage, willing to release our ideas about how we do things at Westminster or the way we've always done things, I believe we'll find our way to a new spring, one that blossoms with possibility. So let's close our time together here with this prayer from Romans, from chapter 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Thank you, friends, for your time and your attention, and we, the elders, will s stick around in case there are one-on-one -on -one questions that you'd like to have give us. Appreciate it. Thank you.